salmon is born in fresh water. It swims down the ocean to grow and then swims upstream the rivers to return to home waters and spawn. It's a tough trip and to many fish, Sacramento River is that place for a final trip home. And by the time they get to this creek near Redding, California, they have swum at least 277 miles. Hello, my friends from Coma National Fish Hatchery. Not a place I ever thought I'm gonna find myself in, but here we are. And this is actually a step number two for, for salmon as they come up from uh, Sacramento River go through this creek and at this point they're going to be kind of redirecting them into the fish hatchery and the reason they do it is because when they built Shasta uh, Dam and, and that kind of started from once they started building dams they needed to protect fish because otherwise if fish goes the natural way up then they're just going to basically die there so what they do is they create this, created this facility for Shasta Dam so that uh, redirect the fish and help them hatch their eggs and spawn and it's actually a fascinating experience and a fascinating process. This is like a ladder that basically prevents fish from going up the natural stream and they're directing them to go into the hatchery so they can have a nice retirement, how's that? So when fish enters the hatchery, they basically are led to a holding pond. And once in holding pond, the ones that are, are um, still not ripe yet, they're staying in the pond. And the ones that are already ripe, so they're going on to the a spawning table and they're being spawned and their eggs are being taken into a particular tray and I guess that's kind of a end of one circle of life to restart a new one so whether you like it or not you know once the babies are growing they take them to these ponds and they feed them the very nutritious food and then when they're ready, they release them out. The water is they actually comes from Battle Creek uh, and many of were there yesterday, but Battle Creek originates from Lassen Peak area, from the melting snow. So these are basically the trays where the eggs go and now it's June, so it's all empty. But come back, come here in October. It is absolutely fascinating. They have a festival here, I think third Sunday of October. They get every year about 13, 12 to 13 million Chinook salmon. Um, and then there's uh, another 250,000 winter salmon, I think. And then there's another fish. So it's, it's pretty incredible. I never realized what a big thing for Central California and especially northern part of Central California uh, salmon is. You always think kind of it's all about coast, right? The access to ocean. But technically the Sacramento River is definitely um, a place for salmon. And we, I got all hungry for salmon. So we came to Redding in Mosaic restaurant and I'm gonna have some salmon um, tacos and I did do some videos for you guys before for Sacramento and it's all capital and Sacramento in general especially old town and then I also did for Central California I did use them in winter and I did um, Sequoia Park so definitely check it out I'm going to link it in the description California is honestly as diverse as it can possibly get and just beautiful well how do you guys like it 
Sundial Bridge, Redding, California. Actually, this is one of the largest sundial functioning clocks, if you can say that, um, in the world. It can't tell time. From 11 to 3, it's actually quite accurate. The only problem is that it's so large that um, eventually the time accuracy a little bit shifts. Wow, it crosses Sacramento River and it's just very, very beautiful space. So let's go check time. The bridge is designed by Santiago Caltrava a famous architect from Spain known for designing artworks that is also functional. The Sundial Bridge also is designed with a consideration of the environment of the river because uh, all the cables were designed in a way that they avoid some areas in the river that are salmon habitat. You guys, I have to show you something spectacular. 129 feet tall, spectacular. This is such an unexpected California surprise. You can see how it comes all the way from the top and then it's like three layers. There's sides, there's a top major layer, and there's a bottom layer. And they're all very different, kind of combined in one incredible, incredible spectacle. Actually, Teddy Roosevelt called it the eighth wonder in the world of the world and gorgeous. Bernie Falls is in MacArthur Bernie Falls Memorial State Park, the second oldest state park in California. This landscape was created by volcano activity and also erosion from weather and streams. It is covered by a black volcanic rock created over a million years ago. The layered porous volcanic rock retains rainwater and snow melt and forms a large underground reservoir. The water here emerges as springs at and above Bernie Falls. There's almost constant flow of 100 million gallons daily. The falls are truly California's most spectacular. You may wonder why it is named MacArthur Bernie Falls. But Samuel Burney was a pioneer settler of around 1850s and the MacArthur family were also pioneer settlers of late 19th century. Their descendants saved waterfall from development by purchasing the property and gifting it to the state in 1920s. There are five miles of different hiking trails winding through the park's beautiful evergreen forests. It is amazing. What a great way to end the day.